But Robert asks, why is Satan the head demon in charge? What does he offer that compels others to follow him? Does the book of Enoch or any other book speak of him? And then Greg, same thing. In podcast 43, you mentioned Satan as the Lord of the dead. In your view, how did he come to occupy this position? And how does he exercise the authority over a person once they die, assuming they do not belong mm-hmm. to Christ? Well, I would say, first of, first of all, Satan is not a demon. He's never called a demon in Scripture. Uh, he's certainly a divine being. Uh, before his rebellion, uh, he's referred to as a, an anointed cherub, which, again, is is a term that's used for a throne guardian. So he's he, he was a divine being that w- had access to God, God's throne, throne guardian. That was his role in the unseen hierarchy you know, of, of the unseen realm. So, again, he... Basically, Satan is a divine being in rebellion. Demons are something different, uh, both by Second Temple, intertestamental Jewish tradition, and also, I think, to cut to cut you know that down to something decipherable here and manageable in the context of our of our Q and A. Second Temple Jewish literature overwhelmingly has the origin of demons as being a demon is a, is the departed, the disembodied spirit of an Ephilim. Okay, it's just that simple, and it's consistent in all sorts of texts from that period. Now you get hints of that in the Old Testament when you have Sheol, Sheol, uh, the realm of the dead, occupied by the Rephaim, because the Rephaim, uh, in, at least in biblical literature, are w- w- were one of the giant clans, or it's one of the terms that are, are used of the giant clans in the Old Testament. So those guys get killed and they go to Sheol and they're not, it, it's not good to see them. I mean, they're, they're threatening in the biblical text in, in the few passages that the Rephaim show up. Uh, it, it's, it's sinister. It's, it's, it has a scary feel to it. So there are connections to this more developed idea that you, you have very, very transparently. And, and it's discussed a lot in the second temple period about what demons are. Well, well, Satan isn't any of those. Okay. He wasn't an Ephilim. You know, he wasn't embodied and then got killed. He's, he's not in the picture at all. Uh, we're talking about a divine being in rebellion. So that's the first thing. I think why he's sort of assigned primacy is because number one, he was the first rebel, the first one who opposed God. And so he has to sound a little silly. He has street cred with everybody else. I mean, he's the first one that transgresses and does his own thing. And secondly, I think what he did, his deception, resulted in humanity losing eternal life. I mean, before the fall, uh, humans had what I would call contingent immortality. That is, they were going to live forever as long as they did or didn't do certain things. Well, you know, the... I think the tree of life, again, that's a metaphor for you know the, the fact that as long as they're in the presence of God and they don't violate the presence of God and get kicked out, they're going to live forever. Uh, but again, in terms of life in Eden, they couldn't just if, – if an elephant fell over, you know, tripped and fell over on Adam and crushed him, he's going to die. Okay? If, if, there's, if they do something stupid, they injure themselves, they're going to die. They're humans. They bleed. They need air you know, to breathe. I mean you, you have to eat to live. Uh, so immortality before the fall was contingent on certain things. But when the fall occurs, all of that's gone. Uh, you're no longer in the presence of God. You will now die because now you are not in the, in the presence of life, which is the presence of God. You are driven out uh, of Eden. You're on your own. Now you will begin to age and eventually you will die. And since every person dies, they are essentially owned by the Lord of the dead Everyone goes to that place that he is now uh, in dominion over because of his judgment. Again, he's a throne guardian cherub. He is cast out of the presence of God. He's cast down to earth. Hebrew word is Eretz. It's also one of the words used in, in the Hebrew Bible for the underworld. Again, that's why there's this connection between earth and under the earth and the, and the afterlife, This, at least the negative afterlife place. Again, there are conceptual reasons why these ideas are connected. I'm not saying that you know hell or, or the afterlife has latitude and longitude. It doesn't. But again, it's, it's the place that God isn't. Okay? Earth is the place that God isn't, especially, again, after the fall. Before the fall, he was there. After the fall, he's not. And the rest of the biblical story is about God reclaiming the earth, re- reinstalling his kingdom, uh, spreading, you know, getting a foothold on the earth and, and spreading the good, 
the good rule uh, of, of God's presence all over the planet. But on its own, it's not where God is. It is the realm of temporariness. It's the realm of death. And it's this place where Satan is cast down. So he's the Lord of the dead. He was the first rebel. And he basically has ownership of every human being because every human being will die. Again, accepting the Lord's return and in our context and that sort of thing. So the solution, again, to that is that you have to have membership in the other kingdom, in the kingdom of God, which we now call the body of Christ. You have to be united to Christ. You have to be a believer through embracing the gospel by faith. Satan no longer has any claim over you. By definition, you no longer belong to him because you will be raised because Christ is raised and you will be with, with, with the Lord forever. So if, you, if you're not in God's kingdom, if you're not a believer, st- Satan still has legal claim, ownership of that person. So once they die, that's where they're going to stay. They're going to stay separated from God. They will not be in the presence of God. Uh, so that, again, that, that's sort of a, a convoluted way of addressing a number of things all in the same sort of uh, shot. But I think that's why Satan gets this, this, this primacy, because of, of what results from his initial uh, rebellion. And, and in, in one sense, he, he owns the earth because he owns everybody on it, because everybody dies. And the only way to, to preempt that or, or, or circumvent it, to get out of the situation, is through, through the gospel, through the kingdom of God. So, now I, there was a, I think he said, he asked something about if there's information on Enoch and, and other books. Um, I've given Trey uh, an essay from a reference source on second temple period texts that deal with Satan and the devil. And he, he, there's a number of titles, Mastema, Belial, that sort of thing. And I'm sure Trey will post that essay with this episode. So you can go and read that. 